Detective Pikachu. The like the movie. But also the like the literal Detective Pikachu. Yeah. He's a really good actor. <laughs> like why why isn't he in more movies? Wait, do you mean Ryan Reynolds? No, no, <laughs> Detective Pikachu. Like why isn't what? Why, why isn't, isn't Detective, Detective the real life Detective Pikachu? Yeah, why yeah. isn't he cast in more movies? Oh, that like okay. not even like Pokemon ones. I'm saying okay. that like in the next Tarantino, why isn't <laughs> yeah. Detective Pikachu? Because yeah. they can't. Because like, uh, you know what? Here's the the sad truth. I hate to I hate to be the bringer bearer of bad news because then Pikachu would have to say the N word. Unfortunately, because that, yeah, that. that is because that is because that is Tarantino's style. Yeah, I don't need the mystery broken. <laughs> so Pokemon mini games. Are there many of them? I don't. I, I, I. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's oh, some in each beauty of the contests. Yep. The, oh, the sure. mini dungeons. Mm-hmm. The like, you can Hold on. feed them food for some. Wait, wait, wait. Just like... before we continue, beauty contests. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, big time. And also, how do you think you're gonna get those ribbons? You you putting lipstick on a Voltorb? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Is that oh, that sounds like a euphemism? It even say, <laughs> you, can't, you can't put lipstick on a Voltorb. Can't put lipstick honey. on his Voltorb. <laughs> Beauty contest wins even get saved in their metadata. Mm-hmm. Like for in the indefinite. I've been on a invoking. Pokemon too long. So is that your mini game? No. no, it has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Thank you for letting us have an opportunity to talk about it. No, the thing that we want to talk about today is called Voltorb Flip. Uh, it's my favorite mini game that's in the Pokemon series. Okay. Um, the reason that I chose it is because I think when I think about good mini games, I think about games that I want to play more than the games that they're actually in. Mm-hmm. And whenever I was playing Heart Gold and Soul Silver, um, two of I, the best games of all time, I did, <laughs> I didn't even like. I just got to um, I can't actually remember what city it's in. Is it Cerulean? Doesn't anyway, matter. you're already breaking. Fake my fan, mind. yeah. So I get I get there and then I think about catching more monsters and I'm like, well, I need to just play some more Voltorb Flip. So we've actually pulled up a a web recreation of this. Ooh, I like that. Um, so it's a little bit like Minesweeper. It's a little bit like Sudoku. Um, what I'm going to ask Kit to do is to input some moves and we'll do our best yeah. to explain what happens. Let's so, do it live. Tell me what to do and so I'll do So if it. you can see around the edges that there are some numbers mm-hmm. and um, you see the Voltorb, that there's a number next to the Voltorb? Mm-hmm. That number of how many Voltorbs is how many are ah. in the row that it right, contributes right, right. to. You don't want to select the Voltorb. You want to select all of the spaces that don't have Voltorbs okay. in them. So it's like Picross. Um, it is a little like Picross, yeah. Okay. So, Kit, what I'm going to ask you to do is the um, the like vertical row that's on the left, if you could tick all of the boxes. The one with a zero. Because we know that there are no Voltorbs in there. Okay. And if you could also do the same for the top row as well, like the top horizontal row, because we know that there's no vault orbs. Interesting. Fine. Now, what well are these new numbers? Second to bottom. Yeah, yeah, second to bottom. Mm-hmm. So what no do the new orbs. numbers mean that we're seeing? So those are how many points you get. You get oh. coin totals in the like the gambling okay. minigame. And you can use that to get a Dratini in the, uh, <laughs> oh. the rule. Yep. I'm um, starting to sweat. This yeah, I know. <laughs> this is where it gets in a lot of trouble. So uh, what I'm also going to ask you to do now, Kit, is to... You see the thing that says open menu on the side? Mm. Could you just click that for me? There's a memo. memo. Oh, oh, sure. memo. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know if that's broken or not. That looks pretty broken. Yeah, <laughs> if you could select um, in the middle horizontal row, if you could select one of them, any of them, doesn't matter. Uh, Take a leap of faith. Click one leap of, of the buttons that have now appeared. <laughs> Uh, Whoa! I should try try the other do? one. Try the other button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. And then deselect the first one that you've selected. Okay. So, so this if the... you could do that for all of the ones that marks because it what somehow? we know what we know of this row is that there can only be a number one in any of these because the horizontal row can only add up to two. We've already okay. seen a one. Okay. And there are three Voltorbs. So you want me to? So yeah, it can only add up to two. Be- is that because of the thing? every single one of them? Yes, please. It can the only add up to two because of the number yeah. above the Voltorb. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we know that that's fine, and we okay. also know that the same is true of the row above that because it can only add up to four, and there's one Voltorb, and it has to have numbers. So okay. all of those are going to be ones as well, except for the one that contains a Voltorb. Mm. The thing about this game is you don't need to care about the ones. You only need to care about the numbers that are above one. Interesting. So okay. the two rows <laughs> so those two rows are sorted i think i might have gotten lost but i'm interested <laughs> this is what I'm it has to be a good number oh Otherwise god the if, this is a Voltorb, if this is a Voltorb, i know i'm gonna click cry. it here click we, it here we go hey, oh, hey okay hey. i trust you i don't know how it happened but i trust you 
So that's Voltorb Flip. It, that's that's it, baby. <laughs> that's the Voltorb game. Flip feels like a, bit, a little bit like Number Wang. I know I bring that up a lot, <laughs> but it, it, it feels like Number Wang. <laughs> but in the same way that any of those, like that Sudoku and yeah, yeah, all yeah, these yeah. other that's games. That's cool. I respect that. I actually, that, that gives me like um, Picross kind of like, yeah, I, I love those little mini games. Best I game think, on the 3DS. I think, yeah, Voltorb Flip solely. Yeah. <laughs> I think that um, I probably put 200 hours into uh, Voltorb Flip. Flip. <laughs> that game and probably 150 of those were Voltorb Flip. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. That's a and lot of Shay, you have a puzzled cards. complexion. Speaking which of puzzles. It suggests to me that you don't understand or. It's permeated your skin, the puzzled. I. Yeah. I'm. So many questions. I don't. I don't understand what I just watched, but. It's great. Maybe, Voltorbs. Yeah. Voltorbs. Sure. There was a lot of numbers that uh, just makes my brain hurt. Um, but if and, you like and it, I Shay love it. Shay is a Sudoku master. Is, is that a barb? Is that a barb? <laughs> is there? Is this a setup for a future persuasion check? Where we get shade <laughs> just, <numbers? laughs> just getting <laughs> shade of place, <laughs> Oh, It's going to end in a lot of tears. I just, me and maths. I hate it. I really do. Um, so, so, did you like Sudoku, Shay? <laughs> absolutely fucking not. Like, um, what do you like? What do I like? I like fighting games is what I like um and one of my favorite games it's actually not one of my favorite games it's just a very good fun game for when you're getting your ass kicked in online matches and you're like i want to take out this frustration let's test your might from mortal kombat they're really fun nice. they are really fun it's they're very iconic um it's also cool in like later games because um they kind of gave it a little bit more personality so if you ended up kind of fucking up your round uh you'd have like arrows kind of shot into your head and i like that sort of thing what, I don't what know. is it though can you explain it what test your might where yeah. have you there's a watch the video cg yeah i mean a link that's... In... yeah i'm okay okay i'm watching okay i'm watching well i mean if you're familiar with like the old school Mortal combat games there's a tower and um they get increasingly difficult and basically you need to like kind of mash the buttons enough like to ah. kind of fill the gauge to a certain point not too high not too little you strike it at the right time you break the thing. It starts okay. off with like really kind of flimsy materials like wood. And then mm -hmm. later on, I think there's like a head and a vice. Um, and then there's like a platinum trophy and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, as I said, it's a nice breather. And then you kind of go back to getting your ass kicked. It's a good time all around. So what we're learning here, no numbers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> only buttons. <laughs> only buttons, you know. Is this sort of like the mini games? I guess you didn't play Ghost of Tsushima. But with like in Ghost of Tsushima, there's actually a pretty... Pretty decent bamboo uh, cutting game. game. Yeah, the bamboo cutting one, uh, where you have to like, yeah, it's kind of this. It's a button pressy thing that you have to do really well in order to to uh, slice. Uh, you know, s s slice. I imagine that's quite hard, but it, it feels like it's it's something that works within the lore of the game, but adds a very video gamey element onto it. What's the lore of, of Mortal Kombat here, other than that they're in combat? You're fucking mighty. Come on. Oh, yeah, I mean, you are mighty. That's true. Yeah. And, like, the way that they kind of did the, uh, I guess, the arcade single-player mode in the original game is, like, you were going up this tower, so it made sense mm -hmm. that, like, um, I think it was, I think it was, like, halfway through the tower, you'd do a test your might round, and then, like, just before the boss, you'd do mm -hmm. your test your might round, so it's, like, you know, actually proving your worthiness of being there and winning that is me not like... having not having murdered 10 people <laughs> in mortal combat that wasn't yeah, enough the... you had to just prove that you're, you're actually strong because like, you that can was break pretty good boards. <laughs> can you make this bell hit this thing hit this bell at the top if you can't you do not qualify um yeah, yeah. so that's test your might what the hell's next hang on how do i relate I this to ducks. B um, for speed. <laughs> D for speed. <laughs> um, yeah, ducks. That's ducks, my. Man. That is my ducks, segue. Man. Bloody All ducks. Right. I'm not gonna sit here and say that Shenmue created mini games because that's <laughs> that's not that's not clearly not true. Just the best one. <laughs> Just the best one. Thank you, Matt. Um, duck racing. Yeah, so this is actually a hidden mini game in Shenmue 2. You can play through the game and never have, uh, never come into contact with it, which I think is the case for a lot of 
the stuff in Shenmue because mm -hmm. that game sort of requires you, both Shenmue and Shenmue 2 require you to get sort of invested in the world around you, both while you're like looking for clues or investigating things or talking to the talking to people it, it kind of forces you to live the life in the setting that it takes place um and so you come across duck racing sort of by happenstance if you kind of dig a little deeper in a particular part of the game and it's just a ridiculous <laughs> it's a ridiculous thing that we at Glasshouse Games have taken way too far <laughs> in some of our content. How much further uh, are we going to lately? Take it? I and think it uh, will continue. we're going to keep we're going to ride that duck, baby. We're going to ride um, that duck for miles. But it's it's a very I mean it's a very simple premise where yeah you're just you're betting on on ducks with this guy who's basically a street hawker um, and probably a charlatan, but. He's taking bets on ducks in the back alleys of uh, for duck fair, racing. You know, he presents them to you. They're more than fair, to be honest. Uh, if you're looking for tips, looks a bit like a Morrison's <laughs> fishmonger. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's a game that I don't think I would have brought to this table had it not been for like the social, um, the almost social exper experiment, social experience, even. Um, aspect of that twitch channel that we've been uh that we've been playing with because in game i mean i've played it in game in actually shenmue 2 and yeah it was a bit of fun then but like i think that when you're actually being able to share this betting experience as if you were like in a in a silly uh las vegas sports betting room yeah. with everybody nobody everybody there is not taking it seriously uh I, it just, sorry it, <laughs> Yeah, speaking um, from the person who made seriously. the most, Matt. I'm a, I'm a several billionaire, <laughs> thanks to uh, Shenmue Duck Racing. Um, it just, it adds this whole, like, other layer of, I guess, like, even camaraderie and, and uh, you know, it feels like a night out almost. Yeah. Uh, I, th that, I think you're that right of... that this is the, the common thread for a lot of mini games. It's either a break from the main game or it's some kind of, like, it's the kind of thing where you can bring someone into the room and be like, hey, yeah, let's bet on some ducks. Like, come on, come over yeah. here. Like, which one do you pick? <laughs> It is something that yeah, feels yeah. like it's it transcends the this, the whole game narrative and could be something that like anyone could engage in. So I'm I I agree with you, Alex P. D for speed, C for guts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that voice. Get involved. Good at holding Get opponents involved. down. Good Wish at holding TV opponents back. Duck racing. <laughs> we'll be there after this episode goes live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're about to do a reflections on the main game that this mini game features in. Why don't you tell me about business management? In yeah, you know, I was, um, I, I'll be honest, folks, I was, I came into this space thinking I was going to say something else. But then hearing Alex P. wax philosophic about Shenmue 2's duck racing made me think about the legacy. We did a persuasion check on it. Check it out. And we're doing a reflections now of the legacy of Shenmue, which is Yakuza Like a Dragon, which came out recently last year, I believe. Uh, maybe the year before that. Point is... Uh, this game, as people probably know, the Yakuza series, which I'm new to now, but uh, I'm in love with, is mostly mini games. I mean, it's like 50% mini games and 50% like normal game, I guess. And there's a lot that you could pick from. But I was trying to think. I was thinking of what are things that like I, I legitimately got lost in because I could I could name games that like oh this Mario Party mini game I grew up playing that and that was really fun. But something I legitimately got lost in. And Yakuza Like a Dragon's business management sim, I I spent way too much time in that capitalism simulator. <laughs> and I think the reason I wanted to pick it is, is as I was thinking about it, like, yeah, duck racing, that's, I mean, it's all good. It's all well and good for, for the laughs. <laughs> but the thing about the business one is, and the reason why it's such a good mini game, and I think the way they, at least in Like a Dragon, the way that they structure the mini games in general is like, it has feedback with the game world. So there's a reason to keep coming back to it. You know, so so whenever you I got stuck in it, I didn't feel like, oh, fuck, like I just I can't beat this game. I was like, oh, I, I know if I do side quests, I sometimes get to recruit cool employees that'll be good for my business. So I'm just going to keep playing the game and then I'll come back and I'll have a better roster. And so it kind of is like it's just really well designed. It encourages you to play more of the real game and then the real game encourages you to play more of it. Now, baseball can go fuck itself. Okay, because that is <laughs> just fucking sport, impossible. Just a sport as a in sport, general. As a sport <laughs> and in Yakuza, it can go fuck itself because that is impossible. That is designed for a mouse. That is not designed for a PlayStation 4 controller. <laughs> if you tell me that you have 
triple S'd or you've done all the challenges in baseball, you're lying and I don't believe you. I thought you meant I... an actual mouse and I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's meant for the mice. Only, <laughs> but, um, the only thing I'll say about the you know, the premise of the ba- the business min- management minigame in Yakuza Like a Dragon is that once you've reached the top, yeah. there's no game anymore. Yeah. Like you're, you're just kind of like, there's no game anymore that you just go there to grind out like Smash X to get yeah. 3 million yen or whatever. Yeah. Where it's not a game that if once I've beaten it, I want to go back to it. But, but I guess what I I'm thinking spend is... Like, like, okay, I spent like five hours, you know, grinding it out and I didn't have a terrible time doing that. It was a mistake doing it all in one because that I just felt dirty afterwards. But like oh, once I God. once I finished it, it was like, oh, I, this isn't a game anymore. You know, like it's mm-hmm. I don't have to think about my properties it, anymore. There's nowhere else to go other than up. Here's my here's my counterpoint. Oh, You're already at the top. Here's my counterpoint. You're right, and it is unfortunate. There's two solutions to this. Number one, I I actually f- remember thinking to myself, and I think saying to my partner. I wish they would release this as its own game. Like, expand it and make there be an end game to it. Is Football Manager. Yeah, exactly. But I think, but here's the thing because the series has like a levity and like a funniness and humor to it as well, like, you know, you can hire like chimpanzees and like Mm -hmm. sentient vacuum cleaners and stuff like that. So there's a, there's a silliness to it. There's, um, you know, there's all those pocket story games though. There's, uh, yeah, like Game Dev Story and listen. Listen to me, Alex P. Okay, <laughs> there's different kinds of mini games. Okay, some are the kinds that are like Voltorb Flip. You come back for life, sure. and some uh-huh. are like they're like you ready for that? They're like the Undertale of mini games. Okay, <laughs> you play it once, and it 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 just it always has that memory, you know. And sure. and maybe someday in the future, I would like to do the climb again. But I just sure. I just love the way it was woven in, and it reminded me of like Space Trader, you know, which is a really old. You ever had it on your Palm Pilot, folks? Palm Pilot, in the <laughs> chat. Um, you know, like these economic, like purely text-based yeah, stuff games. Yeah, on your T eighty one or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, Blitzball, but I had to pick. I had well, to pick. Blitzball got enough love in the comments. It did. <laughs> it did. So obviously, we put the question out to our Twitter followers, and Ian Stokes at Ian Van Cheese said, "Actually, didn't even say. Just posted the GIF of Blitzball. <laughs> it was like that's enough. I don't even need to say the name of this game." I, uh... a million likes on it yeah you you can't hear a picture <laughs> professor you can't hear a picture and then picture of blitzball <laughs> i can instantly what hear is the... it about blitzball that was so uh compelling though like... it was a very simple sports management mm-hmm. game i mean it's similar to i mean in a way it's similar to the to the business management game or any of these other kind of like football manager or pocket story stuff if you want to make it at a more simple version but it was stripped back and then had the added element of of it's not just numbers on a screen you can actually Mm-hmm. take part in it so but i will of... i will say that was a bit of i remember as a kid uh, as a teen probably at that point playing final fantasy 10 and feeling there was a there was a little bit of false advertising in the way they in the way that the media presented blitzball as the central part of the game and then when you get to play you, you would i remember thinking oh i'm gonna go into that and i'm gonna get to play like mm-hmm. i'm gonna play blitzball i'm gonna be running around and doing this and it's like it's much <laughs> more rpg than that and and i know it had a bad reputation for a while because it is kind of this very slow paced version of that but now it's but you kind have of to having do, this you still have to take things fast right because um, there's the guys who come who, yeah. uh, who will charge at you yeah, and you yeah. have a very small time period before yeah. they're on you so it's not turn based in the sense that you can take as much ATB. time as you want uh, how about that? Right. Play. I really feel like the reason that people didn't like it to begin with is that the Besaid Aurox when you start just shit tier team just like so absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and Waka Bender yeah. from Futurama telling you to mm-hmm. Yeah, not everybody Come when on. they boot up Football Manager starts with like the team yep. in. Don't in... get Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just what, used what? to like. I remember like during the summer, my brother would play just hours and hours of fucking Blitzball. I'd take a nap, wake up, and he's still playing the same <laughs> fucking thing. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> just, oh, I think it's important. Oh, so I think it's, it's a, yeah. I think it's important and good as a game because it's a mini game that was so woven into the universe mm, yeah, of that yeah, world exactly. and your character as well yeah and then it was also fun to play like yeah. it would have been i mean obviously people there's some people out there who don't like it like anything i guess but if if that game was just bad final fantasy 10 is a bad game oh. <laughs> you know, because of how there are some people that would say that yeah oh. of course people have opinions <laughs> 
Uh, Astrid, can you play the the ha ha ha? <laughs> clip? Hey, that is a misunderstood clip, folks. I yeah. agree. I that agree. is a misunderstood <laughs> clip. But, so, to, to, did we have other people who also we said let's ball? Uh, there was a surfing mini game in Pokemon Yellow that was from at Rob okay. says. I don't. Okay. I'm not familiar with that. Also, they did say the excellent Pokemon Stadium mini games. Again, don't know. Just Snow Pokemon Stadium, even itself, I guess. Yeah, it's a hard. That's game, a bo though. it's a borderline though, because that's like the game itself, right? You know, cause yeah. We were, we were like, looking it's, at rankings. It's reliant on because the game itself is garbage. <laughs> it's <laughs> reliant. It's reliant on you connecting your yeah. Game Boy and your actual Pokemon game to it for it to be yeah. fun. And that was the exciting thing about it because it was the first time that you really yeah. saw yeah in 3D like 3D Pokemon battles like everything that you'd ever wanted. That that's the first uh, time I ever contemplated putting lipstick on a Voltorb was when I saw it in 3D. I was like, something's missing. <laughs> this Voltorb would look pretty yeah. good. Pretty, with pretty good. This little shade there. At Neil oneself said, uh, the Sailing Piracy minigame in Sly 3. Didn't okay, play, I don't so. know that one. No, not, I that not one. familiar. Not familiar. Okay. Tell us about it, Neil. <laughs> Can't be as good as the Wind Waker <laughs> Battleship game. Get Neil on the call right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What else we got? Um, there's also a zero G kind of basketball mini game from Dead Space. I do remember playing yeah. quite a lot of that as well. No, Dead Space like really creeped me out, so I wanted to spend as little time in that world as possible. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was such a weird tonal disconnect because yeah. like at every other point in that game, you've been completely under duress from like, <laughs> attack, and yet like you know, yo, you want to shoot some hoops? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also the real estate royale in Yakuza Zero, which I'm assuming. There we go. Yes. It, it must be yeah. Yeah. It's related to this kind of mm. business sim. Yeah. Yeah, CG. If you liked the business management one in Like a Dragon, mm -hmm. you yeah. should go to Zero. And yeah, that turns out they made loads more <laughs> games. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, there's the base mini game in Night in the Woods. I remember that. That was cute. That was pretty oh, fun. Did you I not play Night in the Woods? I, I played like the beginning, and I never. I need to go back and actually. Fully oh, the bass guitar. Yes. I thought you because I was yeah, like I was scratching like, my head of like there's a power base defense? building game <laughs> like a dragon. Yeah, it becomes like Command um, and Conquer, you know. Yeah, like no, the, probably through. probably the playing the bass mini game in like in Night of the Woods. I almost said like a dragon. In Night in the Woods is the best part of that game, to be honest. Okay. Well. Oof, mm. Wow. That is sacrilegious. Um <laughs> if you've got any mini games that you think we overlooked. Let us know in the comments or over on our Twitter at GHG Show. Whoa, that was nice. <laughs> That's like almost like you've been in commercials before. <laughs> <laughs> eight million views. I know. Hey, have eight I have million a question, views. Though. How come? Uh, how come in that commercial you didn't drop GHG Show? <laughs> 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 <laughs>